Shalom, Yashrala. This is your brother Dawah Da coming back at you with this here truth again. First and foremost, I want to give all praise unto Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rakakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of great millstone that taught us this truth and that rule well. And salutation and much love for you, Akim, pushing this truth and sincerity on the four corners of the earth and enduring afflictions to feed and edify the elect. Real quick, just in case you didn't catch yesterday's video, uh, go back on onto the page and check yesterday's video, and then there's a link down in the description. To be able to subscribe to uh, to uh, my secondary page, you know, but nevertheless, it's getting onto this here, um, getting into this here uh, lesson. You know, I came across a couple of different articles, which you know, this is like the how do I say it here? Here in America is like the city that that's dwelling carelessly. You know, why all these calamities and judgment is going out around the rest of the world? These Americans, they you know, it's all fine and dandy. They don't believe anything is going to ever touch them. You know, because hey, they've been living uh, carelessly for so long. You know. But ultimately, you know, this is the time that the Most High spoke about, you know, when the Lord was going to start to visit the earth. All right. So really, nobody is, is safe from this, save the elect. All right. But nevertheless, these, you know, and this is why how these uh, Americans are going to, you know, ultimately getting caught by a thief in the night. You know, you know, when, you know, uh, how do I say when things really start, um, you know, uh, how do I say hitting, hitting the fan real hard, more or less to say. But nevertheless, in this point in time, you can see how all this is, you know, pretty much being set for a, um, a domino effect collapse. All right, so I want to, I'm not going to read this article. Well, I'm going to read a little bit out of this article and touch on another article, and then we're going to get into the third article, all right? And they're all really short, but I'm going to just uh, run through this really quick. This says, just a question of when CDC warns Americans uh, uh, coronavirus may cause severe disruption of everyday life. And see, hey, just like, you know, uh, uh, Habakkuk say, you know, Habakkuk chapter 2 say, it, and it's going to speak and not lie, all right? Even though the division is yet for an appointed time, all right, it's not going to lie, all right? So, a lot of the things, you know, pr predominantly everything we've been saying, because we're the prophets, we're telling you beforehand, all right, before things come to pass, what's going to come to pass. And so now you're starting to see all these things come to pass, man. All right. And as we're telling you that this, um, you know, they're going for a global uh, uh, economic uh, shutdown, all right, to implement this RFID chip, which there's a lot of uh, countries around the globe that already have that implemented. You know, China is like one of them. You know, they have they have that. Uh, you can look it up the Chinese social credit system. You know, they pretty much got it. You know, like phase one rolling out already over there, you know, but nevertheless, you know, um, you know, this here whole thing is setting it up for a, um, a domino effect just to, to pretty much introduce that RFID chip, which is the mark of the beast. All right. So it says um, just a question of when CDC warns American uh, coronavirus may cause severe disruption of everyday life. It says the spread of I'm going to call it the coronavirus. I call it the Wuhan virus, but uh, the spread of the coronavirus in the U.S. is not a matter of. A matter of whether but when and americans need to prepare for their lives to be disrupted senior official at the cdc warned all right so now this is the importance and, and they're pretty much telling you how this is all going to roll out once this comes over here because this is what's already going on over there in china you go over there and look at uh wuhan and china they, they you know they have a lot of drone footage out there and it's looking like a ghost town a ghost city you know so just imagine all the hustle and bustle of like new york city all right, pretty much down to like a ghost town. You, you don't see nobody out there. You know, it's, it's no traffic, no nothing, you know. And really, statistically over here in America, you know, uh, we're dealing with the Edomites in this here statistics. All right. These Edomites nowadays, you know, and I'm not going to speak about Jake because Jake don't really have nothing. Whatever Jake got in their pocket is what all they got. So they're not even on, they don't even register on the, on the scale. We're talking about these Edomites and they all bad off. You know, if they bad off, where do you think Jake is going to be at financially? But, you know, Jake know how to survive. You know, Jake Jake been broke their whole life. So, like, in the last uh, recession or whatever, whatnot. So, you know, Jake didn't go through no damn recession. We You got to have something to lose something before, you know what I'm saying? That was them Edomites. But nevertheless, here in the same time, you know, statistically, you know, uh, these Edomites are living paycheck to paycheck. You know, if they have a $400, some kind of emergency, whether it be a family emergency or car breakdown or something like that, you know what I'm saying? Somebody dying in a family, they got to go out of town, rent a rental car get a hotel or whatever, whatnot, take off of work. When they come back, their whole finances is fucked up. You know, they pretty much about to be homeless, you know? You can go look at uh, documentaries on, like, Skid Row and the homelessness uh, in America, Death by Despair. And when you're watching all these documentaries, you got to understand, they're not going to tell you this, but you have to understand, they only really, uh, uh, how do I put it? They only um, surveying Edomites, all right? Because when it comes to finances and things like this, like, all right, you live in paycheck to paycheck. Like, Jake, you know, oh, y'all living paycheck to paycheck. We've been living paycheck to paycheck. You know, a lot of times, shit, we living from paycheck two weeks to another paycheck. Or always from Amscot to Amscot. So, you know, when we talk about these type of statistics, it ain't dealing with Jake, you know, because Jake ain't even got nothing. But these Edomites, 
All right, they live in paycheck to paycheck right now, and they can't afford a four hundred dollar um, emergency in their life. All right, so we're gonna see how this is gonna pretty much roll out. All right, um, let me get down to it. it. Says we're asking the American public to prepare for the expectation that this might be bad. She added, disruption to everyday life might be severe, and a hey, that's what they're saying basically. Because again, we you know when they serve in is these um, Edomites and Jake no. You know, Jake know that so-called these Edomites, pretty much these Edomites be having way more money than Jake. You know, they be driving in the big Benzes, living in the big ass houses on the golf course and so on and so forth. These motherfuckers got yachts and go on vacations. You know, most Jake don't even have jobs with benefits, you know, let alone, you know, they jobs don't even offer them a, a, a vacation time, 401ks. You know, some Jakes do, you know, working in factories and stuff like that. But predominantly, these are these Edomites that have these types of uh, systems and things set up for them. But if they going through hard times. All right. You know, whereas Jake is working at, you know, the fast food restaurant, the Walmarts or whatever, whatnot, you know, they already, you know, scraping to get by. But these Edomites. All right. They're not going to make it. All right. It says uh, Americans need to prepare, need to be prepared for schools and workplaces closing, even elected medical procedures getting delayed as the U.S. healthcare system ramps up an effort to contain and control the spread of the virus in the coming weeks. So just imagine that. Let's go from the bottom to the top. Just imagine, you know what I'm saying, you getting a, uh, a medical procedure done, all right, uh, some kind of surgery that you need, you know, some kind of corrective surgery, you know, uh, maybe you had a heart attack or something like that, you got to get, you know, a stent or something like that put in, but now all of a sudden all the ho hospitals are overwhelmed because of the coronavirus is over here, or you don't want to go out, or it's not healthy enough, you know, because a lot of those surgeries and things like that, sometimes you have to, you know, obviously in the hospital you have to be in a real sterile condition and things like that, or certain things where your immune system you know, like if you're getting uh, cancer treatment and things like that, your immune system is really weak, man. All right, so you don't need to even be in a hospital where a situation like that, man. So you, now you can't go to the hospital, but you need this here uh, surgery or whatever, whatnot, this here treatment plan to take place immediately, all right? But nevertheless, you can't go to the hospital, all right? Or a hospital's being overwhelmed. Or again, like I explained in other videos, you know, once it starts spreading a little bit, man, it's going to spread like a wildfire because, again, you know, up to five days without you showing any signs of symptoms. Now new new information is coming out, even if they so-called, what they call it recover. But if they so-called cure you of it, that's probably why they call it recover. If they so-called cure you, how we would say it, if they so-called cure you, you still have traces of it inside of your body and you still are able to, possibly still able to pass it uh, pass it on. So that's probably why they don't call it curing. They just say, uh, you know, they, they, they recovered you. But nevertheless, you know what I'm saying? You can um, come home from work. Let's say you travel on an airplane. So everybody in the airplane has pretty much got it because they've all been breathing the same air. All right. So now the pilots, because he was already at work, he's going to take it home to his family and everything like that. You know what I'm saying? The people in the airport, they're going to be spreading it to everybody else, the cab drivers, so on and so forth. They're going to get home, spread it to their kids. Kids are going to go to school, spread it to their classmates and the teachers. Those kids are going to go home, spread it to their families. The teachers are going to go home and spread it to their kids, to another school. You know, now the, the parents are going to go home or they're going to catch it from their kids. You know, but then they're going to go back to work and affect everybody at work. And then if they have a job dealing with, like, let's say, customer service, you know, not like in a factory, but let's say they have a job, like, let's say, working at Walmart or something, everybody they're in contact with, they're going to pretty much start infecting or what they're going to pretty much infect. And it's pretty much like they pass it on to them and they're going to keep spreading it and spreading it and spreading it. You know, it's pretty much like, you know, um, you have a, a, a big puddle of red paint that got spilled at the front door of somebody's house, you know, and then you got like a line of people. You know, I have to go through this here doorway, you know what I'm saying? Or, you know, uh, um, or shit, pretty, put it this way. There's a, a, a puddle of red paint that was spilt on the step of a, 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 you know, public transit bus, right? One of those city buses, right? Everybody that's getting on that bus is going to get red paint on the bottom of their shoes. Even once they get off the bus and they still walking around, they're going to be tracking that red paint everywhere. They're going to take it into work. They're taking the bus to work. They're going to take the red paint into work. Now, the, you know. The floor is going to be covered in this here red paint. They go home, so on and so forth, to the store, so on and so forth. You know, and I use that analogy so it can be more or less like a visualization of how easy this here uh, disease can spread, you know. So you have to, how do I say, prepare for these things. So you don't want to be trying to get a medical procedure done at this point in time if things start breaking out pretty bad, all right. Or it says uh, Americans need to prepare for schools, all right. Now, imagine that, you know. One of the things with, you know, the problems with Jake and why Jake be raising up these monsters, obviously we're under these curses, but when you look at it in a so-called cardinal sense, you know, they obviously kicked the man out of the household. You know, they told these women, gave these women this stupid ass independent dream. Like that's, that's the biggest fallacy in the world. There ain't nothing on the planet earth independent. There's nothing in existence that you can think of that's independent, but nevertheless, you know, even Yahweh 
is taking orders from the, the father. You see what I'm saying? So come on, man. You, what you better than him now? But nevertheless, you know, um, you see this with these, uh, uh, you know, a lot of Jake, you know, uh, they're being raised by their mothers in a single parent households, you know, and I don't know if the conditions are still the same because, you know, these women doing some crazy stuff nowadays for some money. But I know when I was growing up, you know, uh, I very rarely got to see my parents because of the fact that actually both my parents was together for quite a while, you know, but I, I very rarely got to see my parents because they were both working two and three jobs pretty much all day long. So I always was at my aunt's house or my grandma's house or somebody, you know, babysitter's house or something like that. All right. So but just imagine that being in a single parent household where the mother is going out and actually, you know, uh, uh, working three legitimate jobs. You know, she got three part time jobs or, she, you know, she's got a full time job and two part time jobs and she's doing all that she can do to so-called legally make money the so-called right way or whatever, whatnot, you know. And now I mean, she already don't have time to be dealing with the kids. So what take, you know, sending them to school is somewhat of a help because at least they're going to be so-called uh, supervised for at least eight hours out the day. Now, just imagine now. You know, now let's just say she got some young kids, the ones that go to daycare and, and elementary school and things like that. Schools are closed. Now she got to be home with the kid. All right. Now she can't even go to work because she got to stay at home with the kids. So now she's losing money. All right. Or let's just say the kid's a little bit older. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes these kids go out and get in a whole lot of mischief or whatever, whatnot. You know, it's causing more of a burden on you. All right. Or just imagine how it says uh, Americans need to prepare for schools and workplaces closing. Just imagine, like I said earlier. The majority of Americans or the majority of these Edomites, a lot of these Edomites like you, are living uh, paycheck to paycheck. You know, they can't uh, afford a $400 uh, emergency or, or whatever, whatnot. So, hey, man, let them, you know, really $400 to them, you know what I'm saying? Like, they make, they actually, you know, because their hourly or their salary, you know what I'm saying, is pretty up high up there, you know. But just imagine them taking a week off of work or whatever, whatnot, you know, or an extended period off of work, you know. <clears throat> I remember when uh, the government shutdown happened. Or whatever, whatever. I know somebody that actually worked for the government, um, in like the Social Security office. All right. And, you know, when they was being furloughed, they weren't getting paid. You know what I'm saying? Like, and they get benefits. They get, you know, they make pretty decent money. But shit, you can't get paid for like three or four weeks. Now you like, damn, man, I might need to, you know what I'm saying? I got to start going into the savings. Or I got to start, you know, borrowing some money from so-and-so. I might got to go over to a relative house to actually start eating dinner over there because we can't afford no food, you know? So, hey, man, even if you do have these benefits, man, and things like that, man, it, hey, how long can you last like that? You know, just like a lot of these Edomites complain about this healthcare system. Now, if you understand when you actually get older, all right, a lot of these Edomites are upset because, you know, they didn't work and put money in their 401k or whatever, whatnot, and built up, you know, they might have a million or $2 million in their 401k by the time they retire, but now they've occurred medical conditions. You know, they had a, a heart attack or a stroke or something like that. So now they always constantly have to go to a, uh, a doctor, see a doctor or whatever, whatnot. Oh shit. If you just have a heart attack or whatever, whatnot, that's going to cost you damn near a quarter to a half a million dollars right right there alone, you know? And let's just say you have a, a million dollars in, in, in savings and in 401k, man, that's half of your, your money right then and there. And you got to constantly go back for treatments and so on and so forth, you know? So they're already at older ages, you know what I'm saying, living paycheck to paycheck. A lot of these elderly people, you know, these elderly uh, Edomites, as a matter of fact, I know um, one of my uh, one of my so-called customers or whatever, whatnot, you know, one of my accounts um, is the elderly white lady or Edomite lady, whatever, whatnot, you know, she lived in a really nice neighborhood. She lived on a golf course with a lake, with a pool, um, on a golf course, lake in a pool, you know what I'm saying? You know, but she, you know, she's over here cutting corners and making sure that she don't this, this and that because she's on a fixed income. All right. So again, she can't even, uh, again, probably a $400 would really put her, you know, really just bankrupt her ass, but let alone another hundred dollars or whatever out of her pocket. She can't afford that, man. That's just like Jake, man. Jake, you know, is making a paycheck to paycheck and got to get a little and Scott borrow $50 to the end of the week. Just imagine something happening in the middle of the week. You know what I'm saying? Where Jake had to shell out an unexpected $200, man. You see what I'm saying? He's already borrowing that extra $50 to make it through. So now he got to come up with an extra $200 plus on top of the $50, man. You see what I'm saying? But nevertheless, <clears throat> imagine being out of work for a couple weeks, man. It's not going to work out for you very long. All right. So this was pretty much all I wanted to grab from, uh, this here article, but let me read uh, this here thing. Um, where is it? It was another article. Oh, right here. It says, U.S. economy, a, gig a gigantic bubble, and coronavirus could be the, the pin, Peter Schiff tells Boom Bus. This was the second art article I wanted to kind of cover over a little bit, but really all you needed to know was the title of this here article because the next article I'm going to go into is actually um, going to deal with that. Uh, where is it? Right here. All right. And what hey, was funny was one of the brothers actually put this in the uh, group chat earlier today. Dealing with, uh, you know, a picture of the stock market. But nevertheless, it says uh, the Dow crashes down more than 800 points or 1,800 this this week amongst amid uh, coronavirus panic. Now, 
if you actually know what's going on with stock with the stock market, the stock market is is pretty much been depleted. You know, these Edomites are literally taking all of their these the smart Edomites, the elite ones, they're taking all their money out. This and then when you go in and you understand what's going on with the economy and the feds keep pumping money into the system, this is why they this is where they're pumping the money into the system at over here. All right. And this is why you're seeing trends of the stock market skyrocketing. This is why if you ask any of these stupid low level ass Edomites, or anybody, oh, yeah, 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 you might want to start investing. Invest, invest, 401k, we're making a lot of money right now. Yeah, because they're propping it up by putting all this here money into the economy. You see what I'm saying? It's not really that the businesses, how, how is it that you see businesses closing down left and right, left and right, a lot of unemployed people, but yet the stock market is just raising up, raising up. The stock market is a reflection of how these businesses are doing. These businesses are failing, the stock market will be crashing because they lose the stock. But however, this is a different scenario to where now, you having uh, 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 the feds have to constantly keep pumping money into the system, all right? Which, to these smart dumb niggas, is making them think that the the, uh, the system is actually skyrocketing. But no, that's that's actually not the case, all right? So even though that you have this here drop right now, it's actually way worse than that because a lot of the uh, the money that you're seeing in there is already it's just inflated. That's the government putting money in. It's not real investors investing into these companies. These companies really ain't doing that good, all right? But nevertheless, this is why they had these little apps like Stash and Acorns or whatever. What now? They trying to get Jake to go in there and prop, you know, try to prop up the system or whatever. What now? So when they pull the plug, they're not really losing out on no money, man. All right, they started doing this a while back. I believe it was the Rothschilds or either the Rockefellers sold all their stock in um and and oil. They 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 got out of the oil business. This was a while back. This was before they started releasing these Tesla cars and things like that, man. They already ahead of the plan, man. All right, but nevertheless, you know, going back to those other two articles we was just looking at. About you know how these Americans is living so carelessly, all right, amongst this here uh, a coronavirus and how these things uh, uh, could affect their everyday life. All right, everything could just come to a screeching halt. And then that other article said that hey, look, man, there's an economic bubble. So they that's again they already know. Like, come on, brother, you, you got a fake ass bubble. You keep inflating and inflating and inflating. That's not how the system really is looking, man. Y'all keep propping this up, propping it up, propping it up, prop. And, you know the equivalent of this is you put it in Jake terms. You ain't got a, a, a car, you know, it, it looked like a decent car on the outside or whatever, whatnot, but the car really don't run. The engine and the transmission is, is gone, right? But you're going to try to supplement that so people won't understand it, what's going on with that. So you're going to try to so-called raise the value of the car or, or maybe the car been in the flow. You're going to try to raise the value of the car by putting a candy paint job on there, throwing a system in there, putting some expensive ass rims on there or whatever, whatnot, you know, putting some, you know, some high tech stuff in there, or whatever, whatnot. So when another Jake come across, like, oh shit, they didn't upgrade. Oh shit, they didn't. Did this and that and this car all souped up or whatever whatnot. I'm like, nah, bro. You know, they they you know they dressed it up like that so you would go there and buy that damn lemon like that, you know. They got a, a, a how do I say um you know they gotta account for their, their 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 shortfalls, you know. So this is the same thing going on in this new system. The economy is actually doing horrible right now. It would have been collapsed. In fact, 2008, the economy actually collapsed. It was since then you see what they was doing, they was pumping money in. They've been pumping money in ever since then, man. They had the bailouts, that's what they was doing. They was putting money like printing more fake money. All right, you didn't even have money to pay off your debt to begin with, and they just keep printing more money. You know what I'm saying? Like, but anyway, you know, or another analogy, yo, 2008, you defaulted on your credit cards. You lost your job in 2008, and you had a big ass credit card debt, and you couldn't pay that shit off. But now, all of a sudden, all these new creditors are now offering you new credit cards. So, what you've been doing since 2008 is you've just been charging up to these new credit cards. All right, but you've never been able to pay off the first ones that you went into full debt with. So, and you're still incurring this here debt. So, eventually, once you get to your, your spending limit, that's going to be it. You've incurred all this here debt on these four or 500 different uh, credit cards. You still got to pay it off. You just made it way worse. You know, when you begin with it, you know, back in 2008, when you first lost your job, you only had one credit card and $100 worth of debt. You had maxed out at $100, but you had got a, you received another credit card to pay off that $100 debt. And, you know, now you've incurred $200 in debt you know, and so on and so forth. Now that you got, let's just say, 500000 in the debt, you can't pay that off because you couldn't pay the first $100 off, man. All right? So it says fear of the coronavirus spreading globally is driving down the U.S. stock market also in China as well, too, with the Dow Jones really around the whole globe globally. Because when you're dealing with America and China and trade, all right, uh, first of all, China is like the biggest supplier of to the world on all kind of goods. All right. Now, America is, num is China's number one uh, um, buyer, you know, but really. You know, these other countries as well. Do you know how, like, they say China uh, um, or America get, like, the majority of their products from China? Well, a lot of these other countries do as well, too. You know what I'm saying? So, hey, man, with, the, with a lot of these uh, uh, businesses and things like that over in China being shut down, oh, expect to see a slowdown come over here real soon, man. 
all right, with a lot of this trade and so on and so forth, man, all right, but nevertheless, it says, fear the coronavirus spreading globally is driving down U.S. stock markets with the Dow Jones Industrial Average sliding by almost 900 points before recovering slightly to a, uh, to close at <clears throat> 27,081.36. The Nasdaq composite dropped by 255 points, 2.77%. By Tuesday closing, uh, by by Tuesday's closing, while the S&P 500 was down 97 points, 3%. All right. So a hey, pretty much in all these sectors, and if I mean just you know not to go too far in the stocks or whatever, whatnot. Basically, these are just uh, highlights of um of how uh. What do you call it? Uh, of how certain businesses are doing. So like uh, Dow Jones Industrial Average, that would be like in manufacturing and things like that. All right. Uh, the Nasdaq, I believe, is uh, just like companies like you. I believe that's like like companies like Sony, um, things like that, just regular companies or whatever, whatnot, Tata, whatever, whatnot. Now, the S&P 500 is um, what is it? The standard and something um, 500, which is like 500 of the top companies in this uh, certain sector or whatever, whatnot. So basically what you're looking at is a snapshot of how businesses are doing around the U.S. right now. All right. And they're all pretty much losing because why? A lot of these people are, are, are well, we're going to it. But a lot of these people are, are pretty much afraid of these uh, 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 these uh, fears of the coronavirus shutting down a lot of manufacturing and trade and people going out and actually spending money. All right. So why would I want to invest and keep uh, investing in, the, uh, let's say, Walmart or, or Apple when, you know, we looking down the road you know we expected this thing to keep going globally and a lot more people to get sick and as we read in the other article prepare for your schools and your jobs closing so if your jobs are closing and you already you know uh, uh, uh paycheck to paycheck living on 400 dollars, you ain't really got no no time to, and you've been out of work you're not gonna really go and go buy no new ipod or no new iphone you know what i'm saying because you ain't got the money you've been off of work and you sick man so you're not gonna go buy a new iphone and you're probably gonna Keep your shopping to Walmart very minimally. You know, you might send somebody there for some groceries or some bare necessities or whatever, whatnot. But you're not just going to go to Walmart to go and get some uh, new candles or whatever for the house or go uh, grab a uh, whatever from Walmart. You know, just some whatever you want to go pick up, you know, some some shit you don't really need, some crayons for the kids. You're not going to go to Walmart for that in the midst of you being sick or the panic of everything going else around you. So what? These companies are looking at, if I'm an investor, why would I want to invest in the Apple right now when I'm expecting that they're going to have a downturn in sales real, you know, coming up real soon, you know? Same with Walmart. If less people are going to be going to Walmart, McDonald's and so on and so forth, I don't really want to invest right now into them. I'm going to actually wait. And these smart investors, they start investing when companies start crashing, all right? Because they, they, they buy low and sell high, all right? They wait for, the, you know, the stock market to start crashing or certain stocks to go down and plummet, you know what I'm saying, to lose so many points, then they start buying then when it's low. And as it slows, gradually starts going up, then that's when they start selling, you know. But nevertheless, it says the coronavirus ep epidemic in China has already disrupted global supply chains. But as the virus spreads to the Middle East and Europe, the economic fallout is growing, driving investors to sell. Like I just explained, Dow never goes up 1,800 points in two days, but it will take two to three months to get it back. Funny how that works. I mean, really, they could just keep pumping the money in there, but people would be, you know, they, they, they realize what the hell's going on. It says it takes a brave soul to be buying these markets. Charles Weston, head of research at Australian Forex broker uh, Pepperstone, told Market Watch, "How do we model? How do we model risk when we can't even model the economics <laughs> with any confidence?" Like I was just explaining, why the fuck do I want to go buy them? Why do I want to invest in the Apple when I can? As an investor, I'm already looking at how the market's going to be going. Now, maybe I want to invest in the Apple when kids are about to get out of school for the summer. You know what I'm saying? He's, so you're going to have some new kids getting their first job, summer jobs. And they're going to be having a little bit more money. Maybe I want to invest in the Apple around Christmas when new people are going to be getting new iPods and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Maybe I want to invest around these types of times. But right now when I'm expecting, you know, an economic downturn because there's a possibility of a lot of people about to get sick. A lot of people are about, about to be out of work and so on and so forth. You know, trade is about to actually start slowing up. Why would I want to invest in these companies? All right. So as you're starting to see with this economic, hey, and once these companies, a lot of these companies get to pay a lot of their bills because they have investors, man. All right. Just imagine you trying to start your little small business, let's say a lawn business. Right. But you don't have the money to invest into a truck or uh, um, or fuck that, you know, uh, because they, what is that term? Um, damn, it's a term like uh, basically roughly paraphrasing like 30 days in the hole, 60 days in the hole, 90 days in the hole or something like that, which means. For businesses, let's say, again, you have a lawn business, right? You're going to go and cut the grass four times a week. 
right, at this particular house or all your houses, but let's just say this one particular house. So you go on week one, you're using gas, you got to gas up the lawnmower, the truck, pay insurance, pay your employees or whatever, whatnot. They get paid every week, right? But nevertheless, if you go to this house the first week, the second week, the third week, the fourth week. Now, they're going to only pay their bill once a month because they're getting paid monthly or, or their, their, their bill is due monthly, all right? But yet, you're going out to service their house four times out the week, all right? So now, businesses, sometimes they have to go get loans, all right, just to be able to pay their employees and pay their bills because, why? Wow, these bills are going to be occurring every day. I got to put gas in my truck every single day. got to put gas in my uh, lawnmower every single day. This is, a, this is a, a, a bill occurrence that's coming up, but I'll have the money at the end of the month or like I said, some I forgot what the name of the term is, but it'd be like 30 days in the hole, 60 days in the hole. 30 days in the hole is good. You know, if again, you run a lawn business and at the end of the month, you're going to get all that, you know, your whole paycheck at the end of the month for all your services. But then there's some situations like dealing with clothes. When you're selling clothes and things like that or <clears throat> certain online businesses and things like that, you don't actually get paid until or certain commission jobs and things like that and sales jobs. You don't actually get paid. That sale don't actually go through. So let's just say uh, 60 days or two months, 90 days, three months, you know, that's when that uh, so-called kickback come in and you actually get credit for that. And that's when you're going to actually get paid. So some businesses actually take out loans just for that. So just imagine how that domino effect will work out. You know, you got this lawn business. All right, here it is week two. And now economics is going bad and you can't even really go get this here uh, uh, loan or whatever, whatnot to pay your employees. So now your employees got to quit the damn job because or go find another job because you can't pay them. All right. Now your customers are kind of upset because you can't even handle the workload because all your employees can jump ship. You see, it's, it's, it's just a uh, uh, how do I say it's just a, uh, 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 a lose lose situation. All right. It says while only 14 cases of coronavirus have been officially registered in the U.S., the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention warned Tuesday that its spread is only a matter of time and that Americans should prepare for severe disruption of daily life in the coming weeks. All right, so they telling you, they letting you know, but what? This is your place. You know, they dwell, dwelling carelessly out here, man. All right, they don't. They don't. Uh, how do I say? They don't take into account. You know, the Lord is actually bringing down judgment. All right, so we're gonna jump into the scriptures. I'm gonna read a couple of scriptures, but nevertheless, you know, these are the times that we're living in. All right, this is the book of Jeremiah, chapter fifty-one. I'm gonna start at verse five. All right, because ultimately you have to understand why this here judgment is going out. All right, because first and foremost, you know, not only did Esau, let me let me get a precept real quick, because the precept will say it better than I can. This is Jeremiah 30 and 16. It says, uh, therefore, all that devour thee shall be devoured and all thy adversaries, every one of them shall go into captivity. And they that spoil thee shall be a spoil and all that prey upon thee will I give for a prey. All right, so. Really, you know, um, let me get another precept. Uh, this is Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 7. All right. It says, And Yahweh thy power will put all these curses upon thy enemies and on them that hate thee, which persecuted thee. All right. So you have to understand that we live in a time now where, you know, these, not only Esau, but these other nations have touched the apple of the Most High's eyes. All right. Now the Lord is bringing down that judgment. All right. The Lord is requiring that was that, you know, that, that, that these heathens did beforehand. All right. So now the Lord is, uh, you know, raining out judgment on the planet Earth. All right. So ultimately, this is the Lord that's causing all these different things. All right. So and when you look at the bigger scheme of things now, first and foremost, two thirds of you so-called Negroes, Latinos and Native Americans, you know, the most high don't really care about your ass right now, man. Well, he care about you enough to destroy your ass. You know what I'm saying? But two thirds of our people will get cut off and die. We're not really talking about them. Right now, the curse is more or less going to still pretty much be under them until they wind up dying and they come back into the kingdom. All right. Then they're going to be born and they're going to all be righteous. However, now, even the elect, we still under the curses as well, too. But the Lord is slightly bringing curses up off of us and putting them on Esau, Edom. You know, so, you know, nowadays, you you know, Jake is catching, you know, uh, some some W's here and there, here and there. Ultimately, you know, we're going to be uh, uh, getting that ultimate victory when we get into the kingdom of heaven. But nevertheless, as we see these curses slightly being put on, on, on Esau and on these other nations, why are all these things happening? Because why? They touched the apple of the Most High's eyes. All right. So this is Jeremiah. 51 and verse 5. Mm. For Israel have not been forsaken, nor Judah of his power, of Yahweh of hosts, though their land was filled with sin against the Holy One of Israel. So the Most High ain't forgot about us, man. Well, saying this, not well, put it this way, he's not saying that to you. It's like, nah, I ain't forget about you, homie, or whatever, whatnot. But, uh, all right, put it this way. 
your kid was out here doing something, right? You got a little kid or whatever, whatnot, but then this other kid's parent came up and just walked up and slapped your kid in the face, right? Now, you was busy this day or whatever, whatnot, so you ain't have time to go and confront them like you really wanted to go and confront them. But you was like, I'm going to come back. You know what I'm saying? So now you see this person again, maybe in a grocery store or whatever, whatnot, you, you say the saying, oh, I ain't forgot about what you did to my kid. I ain't forgot how you slapped my kid or whatever, whatnot, you know? So this is the... This is the equivalent to um, this is the equivalent to what the Most High is saying here. You know, uh, it says for Israel have not been forsaken, nor Judah of his power. All right. So talking to these other nations, like, yo, man, hold up. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, even though I had turned my back on them for uh, for uh, a period of time, you know what I'm saying? Put them on punishment or whatever, whatnot. I ain't forgot about them over there. I'm going to come back and get my kid and you're going to get the, you know, you're going to get judged for doing what you did to him. All right. Verse 6, flee out of the midst of Babylon and deliver every man his soul. Be not cut off in her iniquity, for this is the time of Yahweh's vengeance. He will render unto her a recompense. So Babylon the Great, all right, America, these Edomites and these other nations as a whole, all right, they're about to get judged for what they did to the children of Israel, to you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. The Most High ain't forgot about all the atrocities and the things that was done unto his people, man. All right, and so now he's about to uh, uh, render that recompense. All right, verse 7. Babylon had been a golden cup in Yahweh's hand that made all the earth drunken, and the, the nations have drunken of her wine, therefore the nations are mad. Now, you have to understand that, you know, ultimately, America, and really these other nations as well, too, but America really got super rich, richer than these other nations by, well, one of the ways, you know, in the very beginning was uh, uh, through slavery, all right? They had this huge head start of slavery and not uh, not paying for their, their, their labor and, and stuff like that, and they were sending a lot of the cotton over to Europe and whatever, whatnot, you know? Then ultimately they came through with um, the International Monetary Fund and the Federal Reserve and they really just started printing their own money, you know, and then really started going to go hoard all this gold from these other nations or whatever, whatnot. But their first big spike in, in, in economics and wealth was built off in the back of, uh, of the slaves. You know, this is how they wound up getting everything built up over here. All right. But now, you know, everything. Well, let me keep reading. Verse eight. Babylon is suddenly fallen and destroyed. How for her take balm for her pain is so she may be healed. And that was what Donald Trump ran on. That was his slogan when he was running for president. Let's make America great again or make America great again. All right. So this is the same thing that we're reading here in. Um... Oh, so like, let me read verse eight again. Babylon is, is suddenly fallen and destroyed. How for her take balm for her pain is so she may be healed. That wasn't a Donald Trump situation. Verse nine is the Donald Trump slogan. For we would have healed Babylon, but she is not healed. You know, let's make America great again. Like the most I had a reply to that already. Like, oh, yeah, we would have healed Babylon, but she's not healed. We're not going to heal Babylon. All right. Because this is the place where my people have been. Uh, uh, the most atrocious things have been done unto us here. All right. Since we would have healed Babylon, but she is not healed. Forsake her. Let everyone go into his own country. For her judgments reacheth unto heaven and is lifted up even into the skies. All right. So. You know, all the all the wickedness that this here place, Babylon, America, uh, 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 has done on the face of the earth has reached its limits, man. All right. So now this is the time where the Lord is about to bring down this here judgment. All right. But nevertheless, these other nations still have their judgment that has to uh, be meted out, you know, because all these nations had a, a hand in um, real quick. Psalms 83. This is Psalms 83 and two. It says, for lo, thy enemies make a tumult and they that hate thee have lifted up their head. They have taken crafty counsel and against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. For they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. The tabernacles of Edom, which is the so-called white man. The Ishmaelites, the so-called Arabs the, uh, of Moab, the so-called uh, uh, Chinese. And the Hagarines and Gabal, I believe both of those are uh, Africans. Ammon, which are the Chinese or the the Salak, the Japanese people, Amalek, which are the so-called Jewish people, the Philistines, and the inhabitants of Tyre, Ty which are uh, Hamites, basically Africans. All right. Now the Philistines ain't the same as the uh, uh, who you call the Palestinians. The Palestinians are basically Syrians. All right. And you got to go back into their history, where you know you'll find out about that. You know, <clears throat> talking about uh. The Jewish people and the, the the Muslims been been fighting for thousands of years or whatever whatnot like it ain't been possible man first of all so called Jewish people has only only ever been around like six million of them they was always living over in like Poland Germany uh uh, uh and Russia that that was, at that point in time that was where they was living at all right they had never stepped foot into the land of uh, of, of Israel or the, what they was calling the land of Palestine all right or Palestine you know now the people that was living in Palestine 
all right, which were, um, they were Syrians because when you go back in the history, uh, they basically had ran that whole area and, you know, some of the Syrians lived down in there. Now the population that was over there for like the longest amount of time was only like 500,000 people. It was less than a million people over there. All right. So how the hell you have, they were not warring back and forth for no thousands of years. You just go and do the research, but they keep pushing that rhetoric. But nevertheless, those people that we call Palestinians today, those are actually uh, uh, Syrians. Those are, you know, these are basically Ishmaelites. Now, the Philistines, when you go back into the scriptures, um, these were actually Hamites, all right? But nevertheless, dealing with these other nations, hey, man, this is why, you know, the Lord is, is taking this here virus and spreading it throughout the whole earth, man, because every last one of them had a, a part in our downfall, all right? So we're going to go from there to um, Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes chapter 12. And verse three, all right, because look, America, yeah, they still dwelling carelessly. They don't really care over here, right? But what this place is about to collapse, man. Economically, it's already damn near uh, uh, broken down economically, where you know there's very little jobs. There's a, a huge demand for uh, uh, we call it the uh, 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 gig type uh, um, economy, more or less. To say you know everybody driving Uber and whatever, whatnot, man. Amazon delivery drivers and so on and so forth, man. Hey, just imagine if that break out here, man, how many people, you know, because a lot of people don't drive. They actually Uber and public transportation. Just imagine that, you know, you, you're trying to get in a damn cab and you don't know who got this and who got that. Or imagine these people out there driving Uber, you know, a lot of these Americans is too proud to do any kind of damn dirty job or any kind of job. Uh -uh, I ain't doing that. Just imagine when the coronavirus come over here, like how they getting away from these mold bites and not going to Chinese. Some of them, they're like, no, nah, we ain't going to a Chinese restaurant because they might got that. So imagine when they out there doing Uber or whatever, whatnot. No, we ain't doing that with the coronavirus running rampant over here. All right. Verse three says. Uh, yeah, verse three. And the day when the keepers of the house shall tremble and the, the strong men shall bow themselves. Who's the keepers of the house? Basically, deal, and, and the strong men It's basically talking about these elites, the higher ups, the, the movers and the shakers. All right. So in the day when the keepers of the house shall tremble, and why are they trembling? Looking at the stock market and. Seeing this downturn and economics is going down. This is the time that, we, that we're reading about. This is the time when they starting to tremble. You know, just because Ray Ray from down the block and your auntie and them, they ain't panicking to tell you to panic. Because Jake don't watch the news. They don't They don't know what the fuck is going on until it's something huge, huge, big, man. All right? They, they hear from word of mouth. But other than that, they don't really be knowing about nothing like that, man. Shit, Jake probably don't even know about the coronavirus. If it wasn't no damn meme on the internet, they probably wouldn't know about it at all, man. All right? It says, in the days when the keepers of the house shall tremble, and the strong men shall bow themselves, and the grinders cease, because there are few, and those that look out the window are darkened. Yeah, the grinders are talking about work, you know, manufacturing jobs has all been shipped overseas and everything like that. That's why we're living in a gig, uh, gig-like uh, uh, economy right now, man. There already isn't no jobs. People are already living paycheck to paycheck. Now, let this coronavirus come over here. Well, it's already over here, but nevertheless, let it start spreading over here, all right? And, and they start shutting things down like they uh, uh, predicting it's going to happen, man. All right. People are really going to be hurting. All right. Verse four. And the doors and the door shall be shut in the streets when the sound of the grinding is low. Meaning businesses are going to be shutting down, which businesses are already shutting down, man. See, yeah, Kmart's, Toys R Us's, all these big name companies has been around for so long. It's actually uh, 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 shutting down. You know, a lot of these companies are consolidating, you know, especially after 2008 collapse. A lot of businesses consolidated. Look at General Motors, man. They had so many other uh, car companies like Saturn, Pontiac, Hummer, um, they had, uh, Saab. Uh, they had a couple of different car companies like that. Um, that basically they're, they're not around no more, you know. Or they did they just came back out with the Hummer and now. Now it's under the GMC brand, but nevertheless, you know they pretty much was downsizing because why? Basically, you know, uh, uh, people weren't buying cars. The economy was it, it crashed. You know, that was the end all be all. And then they started propping it up with the fake money that they just been injecting into the system to make it look like it's getting better. But it ain't never really got no better. It's actually been getting worse and worse and worse. Like I said, these elites are literally pulling their money out of the out of the stock market, but they're propping it back up to make you people have faith into it. So you'll pour all your money into it. All right. Now, let this thing crash. You lost all your, you know, all your investments and everything like that, you know. But nevertheless, it says, and the doors shall be shut in the streets when the sound of grinding is low, and he shall rise up at the voice of the bird, and all, you know, you know, you got these people waking up early looking for jobs or whatever, when I still can't find them, you know, and, and, and the daughters of music shall be brought low, you know, and that's pretty much what you got now, it's pretty much like a sad, slow, uh, not to say an R&B song, but a sad song about, you know, I really miss my homies, because you mourning the loss of your friend, right, same thing here, you know, you mourning the loss of, of work, the good times, man, I remember when we was balling or whatever, whatnot, oh, man, now we got to be sitting over here eating raviolis and ramen noodles, man, man, back when I had that job at such and such, man, we was balling back then, man, 
And I remember I used to make all kind of money over there, you know, but now we live in paycheck to paycheck, man. And you see a lot of these people like that, man. You look at the uh, death by despair or despair in America, you know, or look at what these Edomites are complaining about on YouTube. There's a lot of these uh, videos up there talking about how, you know, they went from being uh, making a six figure income salary and living it up, living all good and never really investing in no kind of uh, 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 safety net or nothing like that, starting small businesses or investing here and there because they was just spending a six figure income because they was making that all the time. They, you know, they was shit. They was making uh, seven and eight, uh, 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 seven and eight figure incomes and getting a six figure income as a bonus. You know, it was getting that, you know, two and three times throughout the year, but you know, they was just going out and spurging with that. Now all of a sudden they had to have some layoffs at Lehman brothers and, uh, Goldman Sachs or whatever went after the 08, uh, uh, recession. All right. Then all of a sudden these people who had only done that for so long, you know, there's already no jobs. Where are they going to go work at, man? Where are they going to start getting income at? So now they're going to stop living in this penthouse over there in this high rise in New York. It's now being homeless, man. This is why the homelessness is is, is on a uh, is skyrocketing right now, man. People don't become homeless because, you know what I'm saying, um, they just decide to be homeless. Some people do, but, you know, majority of people don't become homeless like that. The majority of these people become homeless out of, uh, you know, some kind of mis misfortune in their life. Something happened and, you know, now, you know, they didn't fell into a, a pit. And they can't get themselves out of this pit, man. All right. And this is why you start to see, hey, man, I see it all the time, man. Matter of fact, right next to where I work, there's a Papa John's or something like that, man. There's a delivery dude that work over there and drive a Hellcat, all right? Now, there ain't nothing to be studying about. Yeah, boy, I got, you know, a pizza boy got a Hellcat. No. Best believe that's his second or third job, man, all right? Just to, you know, make sure his 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 uh, bills are being met, man. All right, you got doctors out here that used to drive Mercedes or whatever, whatnot, or shit. You still got some doctors that's driving Mercedes that's living in a damn car and driving Uber. I seen that. As a matter of fact, I actually seen that where, uh, you know, a doctor or whatever, whatnot, driving Mercedes, doing Uber in the damn Mercedes. Matter of fact, I think it was like Uber Eats they was doing. But nevertheless, I'm like, why the fuck are you doing Uber Eats and you got a Benz, cuz? What's going on here? But things is is, is 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 slowing down for them, you know? But nevertheless, I don't know if it was a doctor or a lawyer. But nevertheless, you, hey, you got lawyers and doctors living in their cars out in the parking lot, man. All right? Going out to the gym. This is why a lot of these gym memberships are, are increasing. A lot of these people are actually homeless living in their cars. Go on YouTube and look up... Uh, girl living in her car go look that shit up that will that will blow your mind to see how many of these women all right not just talking about women or whatever whatnot but you would think that if there was a decent looking woman out there you know what i'm saying if she was like decent looking you know what i'm saying and she ain't got like no like issues as far as like oh she got heavy demons on her but if you know she ain't crazy or nothing like that but she decent looking you know what i'm saying like shit if i seen her in the world i might i might holler at her in the world or whatever whatnot you know but why the fuck is she homeless she out there living in her car bathing at the damn gym you think this is the hottie at the gym but she just coming to the gym get a little workout on just to have the appearance of a little sweat so she go in there and get that damn shower right quick so she have her shower for the day man go on youtube and look up girl living in her car man you'll see all these different women talking about how they had a daily routine of taking their baths or you know taking a shower at the gym how they eat and live in their car whatever whatnot you looking at them like damn why you looked at you can't go out and go so-called a uh, 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 seducer man, not even say seducer man, you can't go out there and literally find you a dude that you somewhat kind of like and befriend, start talking to him and then let him know, like, hey man, you know, try to do something to get your, your situation a little bit better, not even say you got to be a gold digger, just go try to find a sugar daddy, but like, you can literally go out there and literally genuinely find you a boyfriend and then y'all can go link up together, you know what I'm saying, but you want to go live off of your car because that's where you at right now, man, go look at some research on how these people are really living out here in America, man. You can't you can't judge by off of Jake. Jake could be broke as fuck with no money, in debt, borrow money, but still look clean as fuck, man. You know what I'm saying? Jake Jake could go borrow like fifty dollars, but then he'll go to the store, go get him a, a fresh white tea. You know what I'm saying? Make sure his shoes is clean. You think that he he looking like new money, but he just borrowed this here money. You know what I'm saying? But Jake gonna look like he fresh at all points of time, man. Esau, you know what I'm saying? Esau always be looking like a damn bum, man. You see these riches Edomites, they be walking around with their damn um khakis or they dockers or whatever, whatnot, and they little polo shirt. You know what I'm saying? There's some old busted ass shoes. They, they always look like that because they ain't really looking for no materialistic things to wear, man. So you can't be judging off of the people that you're walking around seeing, man. I'm telling you, man, the majority of these people living paycheck to paycheck and these Edomites are, uh, 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 you know, they're they on hard times right now, man. Like I said, damn near all of my uh, uh, clients, customers, clients, they all well off Edomites living in very rich, wealthy neighborhoods, man. And a lot of their houses are going up for sale and a lot of them are like, yeah, we just can't afford it no more. Or whatever, whatnot. They losing their jobs or whatever, whatnot, man. A lot of these things are happening. So how much more already in a volatile uh, economy? How much more when this coronavirus starts spreading like a wildfire over here, man? All right. Uh.
matter of fact, you know what? I was gonna grab a couple more precepts, but you know, the point is already made there. Um, um you know what? Well, I, I'll I'll uh, briefly quote two other scriptures real quick. Uh, this is Matthew twenty four and verse seven and eight. All right, it says, you know, dealing with, you know, signs of the times of the end when Yahweh is going to make his return. All right, verse 7 and 8 says, for nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. All right, which we've been seeing that, you know, with these wars and rumors of wars. It says, uh, and there shall be famines, right? You know, a lack of food, you know, and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. All right, so let's we'll go into this here word. You know, we all know what these pestilence are, but, you know, and pestilence can come in multiple different ways, you know. Uh, it says pestilence, uh, uh, a pestilent fellow, a pest, or a plague. You know, basically going into a plague, or uh, it says uh, of uncertain affinity, a plague, literally the disease, or figuratively a pest, a pestilence. So, hey amen. The Lord I had already told us about this. It says, For a nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, and let's just say diseases. And earthquakes in diverse places. So these are the signs of, of let me read verse eight. And these all of these are the signs, so like all of these are the beginning of sorrows. All right. So look, the Lord is showing you these are the signs of uh when Yahweh is about to make his return. The Lord is, is raining out this here judgment of planet earth, man. All right. And you can read in uh Micah 2, Micah chapter 2, verse 10, dealing with uh this is not your rest, it's polluted and it's gonna destroy you. So for our people that's trying to live up in this here society keep going forward this this whole thing is coming to a close man it's coming to a grind and halt man all right and then also you shouldn't be um how do i say you shouldn't be um uh looking at this here place is trying to thrive and america keep going on trying to make america you shouldn't mean that make america great against spirit real quick let me grab this real quick uh because like i said the lord is, is taking the curses off of off of jake and he's putting them on esau all right, let me read. Um, this is Zechariah. I'm going to start at verse 9. And I'm going to read 13. Zechariah 8 and 9. It says, Thus saith Yahweh of hosts, let your hands be strong. Ye that he hear in these days the words of the mouth of the prophets, which were in the days of the foundation of the house of Yahweh of hosts, was laid that the temple might be built. All right, so basically... Take hearken to the men of the Lord right now, man. You know, this shouldn't be you shouldn't be out here watching these uh well, you can watch them, you know, get understanding what's going on, but you shouldn't be watching these uh alternative media channels like uh in fact AMTV, which is alternative uh what is it? Al alternative media television, you know, with Christopher Green. I'll use him as an example because he's like one of the ones that's fleecing the flock as well, too, you know. But he's telling you the truth about a lot of things, you know, but he also slot in there that promotion to buy some stuff from him or whatever, whatnot. But you don't want to be watching him. And, and, and getting in the same spirit that he in. Oh shit, let me panic. Let me buy some gold. Let me buy some silver. Silver, let me buy. Which again, it ain't nothing wrong with that. But ultimately, which, what the hell you need that for? You know what I'm saying? Like the most like, we we finna get it all anyway, and you ain't gonna have to buy it. You know, they're gonna be bringing it to you. But nevertheless, um, stocking up food and things like that, man. You shouldn't be, oh man, let me do this, let me do that, let me do all these different things, man. Because ultimately, this is the curse that's falling upon well, two thirds of our people gonna get it too, but you know, the curse ain't gonna ever lift up off of them. But the majority of it, all of this judgment is predominantly going out on, uh, uh, well, two-thirds of our people, but predominantly these other nations in Esau, Edom, all right? The elect, again, they're, they're being cleaned up right now, all right? So, verse uh, 10, for before these days there was no hire for man, nor any hire for beast, neither was there any place for him that went out or came in because of the affliction, for I set men, everyone against his neighbor. Look at the conditions we in right now, man. Self-explanatory, all right? But now, uh, but now will I not be unto the residue of this people as in the former days, say if you have a host again, the curse is going to start coming up off of say, the residue of these of this people. So talking about the elect. All right. Verse 12. Now, again, we looking at the the, the, the decay of Babylon, a great the decay of two thirds of our people. Everything is going bad for them right now. But the elect, you know, they actually coming up on the ups right now, you know. Verse uh, 12. This is why you shouldn't be panicking and all, you know, scared or whatever, whatnot, you know. Verse 12, for the seed shall be prosperous, all right? Talking about dealing with the elect, first and foremost. The vine shall give give her fruit, and the ground shall give her increase, and the heaven shall give give their due, and I will cause the remnant of this people to possess all these things. Where is that at? Um, 
Let me reverse that. I think I know where it's set. And it shall come to pass that as you were cursed among the heathen, O house of Judah and house of Israel, so will I say, save you, and you shall be a blessing. Fear not, and let your hands be strong. So, hey, the Lord, hey, don't be afraid as Babylon is, is slowly crumbling and decaying, as these people are fearing over these types of things or whatever, whatnot, man. The Lord is the one that's going the Lord is the one sending these things out. So the Lord is the one that's also going to deliver you from these same perils, man. All right, so let me go back to verse uh, 3 or 13 uh, or 12. For the seed shall be prosperous, and the vine shall give her fruit, and the ground shall give her increase, and the heaven shall give their due, and I will cause the remnant of this people to possess all th all these things. So you can, I think you can go back to Genesis uh, 27, dealing with Jacob's blessing. But also, I think it's also reiterated. Um, uh, maybe Deuteronomy 28 or 32. Okay, here it is. This is uh, Deuteronomy 28 and 23. And thy heaven, these are the, uh, the curses that befell the children of Israel. These are the curses we're up under. Um, and, and thy heaven that is over thy head shall be brass, and the earth shall, that is underneath thee shall be iron. And Yahweh shall make the rain of thy land powder and dust, and from heaven it shall come down upon thee even until thou be destroyed destroyed so basically going into that is is like talking about um you know just imagine we'll go back to the old days you know uh, this is like a, we, we live in an agrarian society you know basically farming right agriculture right so we had an agrarian society back in those days so like today you don't work you don't eat all right so if you didn't plant and plow or raise up livestock you weren't eating right but just imagine if you was planting and, and, and sowing or whatever, whatnot, but then there was no rains to come in and water those grounds. Your crop's not going to grow. All right. So these were the curses that was that was upon us. So we weren't very prosperous in a lot of the things that we were doing, especially when it came time for economics, like work and things like that. You know, we weren't very prosperous. You know, we you know, we, we pretty much as if we had, a you know, we put money in our pocket or put money into a bag and the bag had holes in it, you know, but nevertheless, like as we just read, you know, in uh, Zechariah, the Lord said, look. I'm about to start making, you know, making the heavens over your head, you know, like it's going to rain again, more or less to say, you know. So now, you know, even though you was trying to plant out there in the desert, that's what I caused to happen. I, you know, I, I caused this here wetland to dry up like a desert. So now you can't plant, you know, your whole farmland is all dried out, turned into a desert. But now I'm going to bring back the rain. So now you can start prospering again. All right. So the Lord is, is starting to let the elect and 144,000 start to prosper in this point in time. You know, there's only going to be an uphill uh, trend from here on out, you know, for the, the 144,000 in the elect. All right. But for the rest of these people, it's a downhill spiral for them. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and close out with that. Lord willingness, your lesson was edifying unto the elect. Until next time, I say, call halal Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rakakudash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of the great millstone that taught us this truth and that rule well. A citation of much love for you. I can push in this truth and sincerity on the four corners of the earth and endure afflictions to feed and edify the elect. Until next time, I say, stay strong. Shalom.